In this question, we will calculate the hydrostatic force that's acting on this portion of the semicircular plate when this is submerged into the water vertically. And whenever we put anything down into the water vertically, we have to use integration because the pressure are different depending on how far down we are underneath the water. The pressure here will be bigger than the pressure up here. And the connection between pressure and force is this. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. The question is asking us for the hydrostatic force. Therefore, we are going to look at this equation as force is equal to pressure times area. The area is usually the harder part because that's the part that we have to do the labeling, do the math for it. And then the pressure, we have to look at the distance, how far down we are underneath the water, and we multiply by the density of the water. Here, we are using meters, as we can see from the question. So we are going to multiply by 1,000 for the mass density of the water and also 9.8 because we are, we are using the um, SI unit. Let's begin with the area. And to do that, we first start off with by drawing a rectangular strip like this. And then our first goal is to figure out an expression for the area of this red rectangle. And let me just label this as dy, the small change in the vertical distance, I'll just call that dy. And then I would like to use the um, x, y coordinate approach for this. And in fact, we have to, because here we have a semicircle. And this is where I'm going to pl uh, place my reference frame. Um, you can do it at the center, no problem, but I would like to just do it below down here, okay? So this is going to be uh, the, uh, the middle um, down here, and I will just place this right here is my x-axis, and then this right here will be my y-axis. Even though the center of the circle was there, and technically you should place the reference frame centered at the center of the circle, but it's okay, this is, works as fine. Anyways, based on the reference frame, as you can see, I call this dy because that will be the small change in the y-axis. This right here will be x. And then I will have to figure out 2x times dy, that's the area of that red rectangle. But then the x has to be in terms of y, that's the hard part. Well, let's look at what we have. This is pretty much just a portion of the circle, right? And we are going to write an equation of the circle. And to do that, what do we need? For any circle, we can write an equation of the circle by using the formula x minus h square plus y minus k square is equal to r square, where h comma k is the center, okay, and it will be based on your labeling. Well, this is my labeling, my reference frame. The center of the circle, if you consider the whole circle, the center will be up here. That will be the center of the circle. This coordinate is going to be zero because it's right here, zero, right, right on the y-axis, right the comma, and the diameter of the circle was six. That means halfway will be three. This right here is also the halfway, right? This is also the radius, so zero comma three. So that will tell us h is zero and k is three. So I know that we will have x minus zero square plus y minus three square and then the radius is just half of this, which is 3, so it's equal to 3 squared. This is going to give us the whole circle. That's the equation of the whole circle. And we just have to isolate x in terms of y. So this is nothing but just x squared, and this is, well, I'm just going to move this to the right-hand side. We will have 3 squared, which is 9, and I'll just write it down as minus y minus 3 square. I'm not going to expand this out because that's just algebra. But then I do have to square both sides. So that way I can get the x by itself. And I will take the positive x value, the positive square root, because I'm on the right hand side, right, according to the picture. I will take the positive x, um, the positive square root for x. And I'll just write down like this, 9 minus y minus 3 square. Okay? All right, 
So let's write an equation for the area of the rectangle now. We need to have x times dy, but that will give us this portion only, right? We need to multiply by 2. So uh, let me just write it down here. So let me put down 2. So technically, it's 2x, OK? So that's, that's the 2. So altogether, it's 2x. x is this. I'll put this down. Square root 9 minus parentheses y minus 3 square and then dy. That will give us the area of this rectangle right here. All right. And because we're in meter and we are also underneath the water, we are going to multiply by 9.8 and 1,000. So let's do that. So let's multiply by 1,000 here and then multiply by 9.8 here. And we're almost done because we take care, we, we took care of the area and we took care of the density and now it's just the matter of the distance. How far down we are underneath the water. Based on our labeling, this much is x, but from here to here, that will be y. And then notice that the whole thing, well, from here to here, it's a radius, it's technically 3. But then you take this out, right, because it's only this portion that's underneath the water. So from here to here will be 2, 2 meters. How far down we are underneath the water? Technically, this right here, this much is only 2. And we subtract y. In another word, this right here, that will be the distance, which is 2 minus y. That's what we have to multiply. So we'll do that right here. 2 minus y. This right here will give you the hydrostatic force that's acting on this uh, small rectangle. And now we just have to do integration to find out the whole thing. And this starts off with y is equal to 0, okay? up to when y is equal to 2. And altogether, this will give you the hydrostatic force um, that's acting on this portion that's underneath the water. And we are done. And let me just tell you the answer. This is approximately 6.7 times 10 to the fourth power. And because we are in the SI unit, the SI unit for the force is Newton. So we put an N right here. And we are done like this. And a small remark is, you could have placed your reference frame, the x-axis the x right here and the y-axis right here. And you just have to come with a different equation for that. But um, I think this is slightly easier in the sense that if I place it here, this much will be y. And this right here is easier to see is 2 minus y. But uh, as long as you can come with the same answer, depending on your labeling, it's fine.